Well, hello and welcome once again to the Mansfield Matters Podcast, the only show on the internet, on the radio, wherever you want, which is 100 million percent dedicated to Mansfield Town FC. Probably. Uh, today, a little bit different setting. We are again, once again, in Berry Hill Park, but we are actually sat looking out to the lake, the lake behind us, enjoying the, the evening sound, and, and here to talk Mansfield Town once again. And we're back to the fabulous form. Cam Felton, Nathan Edge, Hello. Mark Bum. And me. And these have all come sort of dressed in normal series. I'm here in, in, the, in the shirt and tie after the long day's work. So I do apologise for the, the over, overly dressed. I thought we were going out for a costume, but it's fairly nice. Fairly nice. Listen, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, that's it. Fairly well, we thought you were paying, so. Well, I thought Nathan was paying, so apparently, obviously, no uh, bronze medal today, so fairly he's, he's had that down. He's made already. Only a reward for the first place, I'm afraid. Ah, uh, fair play. Yeah. Well, let's talk about, obviously, the, the stags then once again. Um, and we sit with Yet again, another frustrating, I wouldn't say disappointing performance, but let's, let's say frustrating to, to say the least at, at Carlisle, a 1-1 draw. I think it's frustrating definitely is the word, because we had the chances to go out and win that game. Fair enough, there were some fantastic saves by their goalkeeper, but to be honest, it's like another missed penalty. Really, we should be putting these away. We think we went, what, two, two years without getting a penalty? Recently, we've got quite a few, and we just can't take them chances. And at the point of the game, we were just starting to get on top of that game then, and I think that really let Carlisle back into the game for the second half because they didn't seem up to it um, as much as we did. Mark, obviously, you were there as well. What's your your thoughts on the, on the game? We were obviously sat together watching. So, what's your what's your viewpoint? Yeah, more of the same again. I mean, it's frustrating, isn't it? I mean, again, you know, we were on top of the, the second half, especially. I think we was on top of them and we played some good football. But again, three penalties in a row now we missed. I mean, you know, it's we're playing well, but again, it's just we should be doing better than what we are I think, with the players we've got. And Nathan, obviously, you know, Mark and Cameron both mentioned it. There, three missed penalties. Obviously, listening on on Saturday when the commentator screams, Mansfield have got a penalty in the over elaborate way that they do. <laughs> um, as I, as I know myself. Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bit of an example, see later away. Um, does that start to fill you with a little bit of dread now, knowing that we've missed three and three? Do you think here we go again? Um, well, when we get the penalty shout, I actually, it's probably the first time I didn't get excited uh, myself. I, I, I just, I don't know what it is this, this season, but we're just not having much. Look, even in pre season, uh, I know when it came up to uh, the, when we got the penalty against Carlisle. Uh, we know Lee Angle was there, he, he wanted it, didn't he? He wanted to take it. Even he missed one in pre-season out in Malta. I mean, he hit it well, but it was saved. Uh, so really, we, we, he's also missed one if you, if you count pre-season. And then um, when they did, uh, when I re- remembered Kane Hemmings on it, which I actually thought, that's a little bit where I had a bit of belief that we might actually put it away. And um, to be fair, it wasn't a bad pen, was it? It was a good save. In comparison to the last two, it wasn't a bad pen. Um, so we'll give him that, but it is disappointing the fact that this seems to be costing us a few. I think really it's probably cost us about six points now. You know we should have uh, should have uh, cl- clinched the game against Luton. That would have been three points there. That could have won us a game as well at Carlisle and, and, and another three points. As and well. you think would that have possibly got us into the second round of the cup? It was one 0 Rochdale at the point. We were absolutely hammering their goal. We get this penalty. And all of a sudden we start stumbling. Now you see, that's the only that. that's the only penalty that I, I look back on and say that wasn't a, a, an error from a Stags player. I mean, you look at the conditions that night, as we said after. They were poor. Yeah. There was only one way you could go, and that was hitting that hard and low. And the keeper yeah. knew that. That's do you, smart do you think that changed the game though? Because the Stags seemed to stutter slightly after that. Oh, of you? course it did. Yeah, missing a penalty, one hundred percent knocks your confidence. And I think, think if we're being completely fair, it's only by luck that we got back into the game. I mean, that's not taking any away from Callum Butcher. What a finish it was. was beautiful. The deftest of touches to yeah. lob it over the keeper with such precision. Yeah. But you've got to ask yourself, you know, if, if a bit of luck didn't come our way like it did, would we have got back in the game? I don't think so from, from, from the way we were playing. I think it was, getting the penalty, great. We always had that thought in the back of our heads, we're, we're going to miss this, we're going to miss this. We've not scored one yet. But I think that's what g the players on a bit more. Knowing that we've missed penalties before, we've like just fizzled out in the game. We've not really pushed forward any more than that. So I think, to be honest, I think Carlisle on Saturday is a great, great way to respond to A, being 1-0 down and B, missing the penalty. Because we played them off of the park most of the second half. We were just unlucky not to get the goals that we deserved. Yeah. I think the, th- the thing is as well, Nathan, you, mentioned, you said six points. I've counted seven. Where obviously the opening day of the season um, away at Crew, we should have won. Hmm. 
so that's two points dropped there. Uh, again, Luton, two points dropped there. Accrington, fair to say we, we dropped a point there, so that makes five. And then obviously the, we dropped two. I, I think at Carlisle we should have probably beaten them as well. So seven points dropped. Those seven points at this stage in the season, yeah, it's early, and I agree with what Paul Rayner says. There's no need to get sort of help about it yet. But you look at adding those seven points to what we've already got, converting those draws into wins, and that defeat into a draw that makes us much more stronger and, and probably much more feared going into essentially what is a really tough September now. You look at some of the games, obviously we've got a big local, it's not as big as what we've got coming up, but we've got local derby against Grimsby on Saturday, we've got Lincoln in the middle of the month, Knox County to finish the month off, we, we need to be proving ourselves. The biggest game for me is on Tuesday night, Wickham. Wh Wickham are always a good test and they've always been a physical side. We've struggled against them a lot of the time, draws or losses. So it should be an interesting game to match that one. Yeah, it's, it's very frustrating. Nate, do you, do you, what's your views on, on the points drop situation? I mean, it is early in, in the season. You've played in a, in, a, in a tournament. You know, obviously you've got off to a fantastic winning start with the England blind squad, but you will know as a group and know as a, as a footballer and somebody who you know, is in that environment that it's not all about how you start, it's about how you finish. But the importance of getting those points on the board it brings momentum, doesn't it? Yeah, I think that's probably the most disappointing factor is that uh, I think we really could have done with a good start to the season. But I think we can take a lot of positives out of it. I know, like I say, it has been disappointing the fact we have dropped, like you say, seven points and a lot of those games we really, really could have come out with a lot better. But we have put in some good performances, like, for instance, Luton. And let's, let's face it, Luton are going to be up there at the end of the season. So if we can put in performances like that, as long as we cut out the silly mistakes and then as long as we I think we still need to gel as a team and I think that's a big factor and that's why I think we're conceding the goals we have done as well so as soon as we start gelling a bit more and we learn how to see out games I think we'll come good I think we're nearly there I don't think we're that far off so um, I, I feel like this will be a big month I just hope we do hit a bit of form because we've got so many games in September and some big games as well it's, it's a massive opportunity for us and uh, to be honest I think three points against Grimsby on Saturday is, will be absolutely essential. Yeah, I massive. tweeted that after the game against Carlisle. I think we really do need to get three points on Saturday. So is, is everyone else in agreement with that? Because I think, you know, getting three points this stage, obviously, we're going to have... Let's, let's not, you know, deny it. There will, there will, will be more in the one call stadium on Saturday by virtue of the fact it is Grimsby in a so-called derby game, I say in a bit of Yeah. Um, but again, it puts pressure on because if you put in a good performance, you put in a good win, those, some of those supporters, maybe 25-30% of them then come back and then come back again and again and the gates grow and the money grows. And, and I think it's this month, if you're wanting big gates, this is the month that you're wanting them. It'll be a near enough sellout away at Lincoln, that'll be a great atmosphere, it'll be a near enough a sellout at home to Notts County. Wickham, not so much, I don't think, because it's a Tuesday night, kids are back at school, I think you'll be back down to your normal just two and a half thousand like we were used to getting but I think you look at the games that we've got we need these supporters and with it's like attendances don't win your games but they go a long but, way but they do go a long way it's that fighting spirit you look at Carlisle we took we took what 200 and summit with us I think that it, we made plenty of noise we were willing the team on we were, and it does go a massive way and I think without the supporters you, you've not got a chance no, it's certainly something you, you've got to do there so obviously get yourself down to the, the one course stadium on Saturday and one o'clock kick off of course Let's, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about Grimsby and about Wickham coming up but obviously it's the, kind of the, near the start of the show so guess what time it is connection question Nath yeah connection question question that's right, it's time for the <laughs> yeah. connection question. You're getting good at this. I know, yeah. so it's like there's a format to this podcast. Oh, yeah. How dare we do something so so organised. <laughs> uh, every week I ask you guys on the panel a question which randomly links uh, to an upcoming opposition, the upcoming opposition of that week. This one being Grimsby, so naturally, this one's going to have links with anyone, any guesses? Fish. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah, who fish, knows? Yeah. Um, obviously... <laughs> The Stags suffered their worst defeat in the conference at the hands of Grimsby when they were battered on New Year's Day. Oh, Losing love the fish two. pun. Love the fish pun. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Louis Briscoe scored one of the goals, but who got the other? Do you think you know? We'll start with Mark. Do you think you, you remember who? On that terrible day, were you there? 
on New, no. New Year's Day 2011. <coughs> you lucky, lucky man. <laughs> uh, you think you remember? You could put a name to it though. Got a name of me idea. Okay, Nathan. I'm sure. Were you, were you there? That I day? was there, unfortunately. Yeah. I'm not going anymore there, to be honest. But uh, <laughs> I think I, I. Well, I don't know. But I'm going to take a guess. Okay. Okay. And Cam. I've got two names. But I can't remember if the player that I've got in my head scored or got sent off. Right, okay. <laughs> so I don't know, yeah. Stay tuned to find out who those two names were. We'll reveal the answer at the end of the show. You see, that's how it works. You see, it's a bit of a teaser, isn't it? It's yep. getting, getting them on the hook, it's almost like going, um, what is it? Fishing. I, I was thinking of cramming. Yes, that's, that's, that's the one. <laughs> Ironic as well because we sat by a lake. Yeah. Watch this on the video. If you listen to the audio version, you've got no idea what we're on about. Get on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash MCFC Matters, and check out the video version of the, the podcast as well. Let's move on then uh, by talking about um, Deadline Day. Obviously, we recorded last week's podcast on, on the Wednesday, so we, we missed Deadline Day, mainly because one of us sort of decided to go on a three hour long journey by themselves up to Carlisle and not take you lot with me. Sorry about that, boys. I, I we got there eventually, right. although yeah. Nathan. We owe, we owe you one, Nate, don't we? So we, we went, so... No, so I was busy moving out, so I... Yeah, that's, yeah. that's why I didn't yeah, go Nathan, right, Nathan is doing a very important job for the Mansfield Matters podcast. I think we can reveal this, Nathan, it's right to say, isn't it? I don't know where you're going with this, so let's find out. Something about a tub. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Yeah. When it gets to Christmas, you see, it's starting to get a little bit cold now, so today we're actually... Only, we've, what we're going to try and do here on the podcast is get to as many different places as we can, whilst it's still late and the weather's OK. But when it comes to sort of October, November, and it starts to get a little bit colder and a little bit, you know, weather's horrible. Nathan's just brought a house, which is in your vlogs. Yep. Check out youtube.com forward slash it Nathan M's. Nathan and Emma. Nathan and yeah, Emma. Okay. We'll put the links in the description and everything. Um, and you've also put, made a very vital purchase to, uh, for this, haven't you? Yeah, it's top of my list, top of my list. So, First yeah. thing you brought, isn't it, as well? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> no kettle. No sofa, no any, just this particular item. Do you want to reveal what it what it is? Yeah, I've about to try to treat myself to a hot tub. So, so there you go. That's going to be uh, the location of... Uh, what's going off behind it? <laughs> <laughs> it's dark really loose, so you might be able to see that. The back the <laughs> Chasing the geese, which is quite funny. Yeah. <laughs> Although, Cam actually thought they were chickens earlier, which was also... No, it, it's, a, it's a meme. <laughs> it's a meme. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, let's get on to the, Obviously, you, you've purchased a, a, a hot tub yeah. purely for Mansfield Matters podcast. This we, is right. we could say that, yeah. We'll yeah we'll, let's go with yeah, that, yeah. yeah we'll, let's go with we'll that. We'll think that you love us enough to, to buy to buy as, as a hot what tub. Or is it? Nathan, right Nathan's hot tub one week, my hot tub the other. You've not got a hot tub. Your hot tub, is, your, your hot tub compared to Nathan's. Is, Nathan's is an actual hot tub. Have you got a proper jacuzzi sort of one? That's yeah, the yeah. one. No, I've yeah. got a lazy spa. And we'll, we'll the lazy spa. That's just oh, a essentially no, glorified bathtub, isn't it? It's yeah, a yeah, bowl which blows bubbles out, isn't it? <laughs> it's going to be blue and yellow as well, so don't no, worry. Oh, so yeah. there you go. We will look forward to fu- future podcasts. <laughs> it's not yeah. recording. Well, we, we can make we'll it. Decorate blue and it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this, this light, isn't it? Yeah. Future podcasts will be filmed in Nathan's hospital. Be warned. <laughs> don't worry. We, we'll, we'll censor it. Don't worry. So it's, it's all fine. It's all good fun. Uh, let's move on. What was I even saying? I was talking about. Oh, I can't remember. Deadline day. Deadline oh, day. Oh, deadline day. Yeah, because we missed last week's podcast. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's not go down that tension again. Yeah. Uh, deadline day, of course. Um, we saw one in, one out. Callum Butcher signed uh, from Millwall, and of course George Taft left on loan, six month loan uh, to Cambridge as, as well. Uh, first and foremost, where do you want to start? Do you want to start with the outgoings or the incomings? I want to start with Taft. Taft, oh, simply because of I'm going to refer back to what I was saying last week, and I was actually very disappointed to see that Taft went out. To be honest, I'm glad you've said that. Yeah. I'm, I'm 100% glad you've said that because I think I mean, what's your what's your reason is for uh, it? I mean? My reason is just because. Plainly, well, one I think he's a good player. I mean, we have got some very good players in defence, but I just think he, I think he's probably better than a few that we have got. And second, we're struggling on the left side at the moment. And I, I, I this is what I said in the last in last week's uh, in last week's podcast that I felt he was going to be a good option to come in on that left side because we know he can play there, but he's more of a defensive option. You've got Benin and Hunt who are, are more wing and attacking minded. I mean, he can come. He, he can very easily slot in there when we need to see our games. And when we talk about, you know, also playing the five at the back, I can see him on that left, back left centre back. So that for me was disappointing. And I hope he's. I hope he has only gone out there to get some game time, and, he, and, and he's in uh, Steve Evans' mind to feature in the future and nothing else. I and they also help. He's not allowed to play against us as well. That is true. Yeah. I mean, I would be inclined to say that that is true. As, as to go as much as to sort of say. Yeah, he's gone out to get game time because if you look at last season, obviously when Steve Evans came in, and this is it, it was proved in, in some cases as well. 
if there are players who are injured or there are players who aren't performing or whatever, a new manager will come in and say, right, I don't like you in that position, I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of you, which, you know, prime example, Chris Clements. Ben Whiteman came in, Chris Clements went and I went to, to Grimsby and to what have you. There are a few other examples in there which we could name. George Taft was obviously injured, but he was coming back from injury. Steve Evans knew of his quality, liked what he saw in training, was pleased with his attitude and, you know, would have probably introduced him sooner if he'd have been, been fitter. So is it a case of Taft saying, look, I've come back from injury, I need some game time, Can, are you going to offer it me or am I going to get it? And, you know, hopefully he can go to Cambridge and come back because I think if we got rid of George Taft, as much as people online are saying, you know, he's injury prone and, you know, he barely ever plays or whatever, mm. I think he's a, he's a fantastic acquisition for us and well, yeah. a good player. I mean, you kind of feel for him because he's not really been given a chance this season. I mean, I thought last season, well, especially at the end of last season, I thought he was on stand up performance to be fair. He's very unlucky not to, you know, been started at least. Cam's laughed at me because I've put my coat on. You know, cold. Cold. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. yeah. So we decided to come outside just to get <laughs> nice weather and... <laughs> what? What's your, what's your just, problem? I don't get what your problem is. It's not cold. It is Nash. Well, it doesn't matter, does it? It's fine. <laughs> Carry on, Mark. Yeah, sorry, Mark. There you are. That's right. <laughs> don't get cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's one of those interesting things, isn't it, with, with the Taft situation? Because you know you look at the defenders we've got, and I think it's a, you, the point you raised, Nate, actually, that stability and that sort of you know strength on that left hand side. If Johnny Hunt or Mal Benning gets injured, suspended, and then you know we're down to one, I don't see who else that we've currently got now with Taft being out could play in that left back position. Would you say that we'd possibly? Put CJ Hamilton back there just because we've got nobody else. Oh, we can record. That wouldn't work, that, I, think. He, I think we can. I think there I is think we'll probably be able to manage more. with it because they think he's a, he's very skillful. He, he knows what he's doing. He's yeah. a very very good player, and I think he's very unlucky to be, be playing at conference level a lot of his career. Mm. So, but you know what? He's he's a very talented player, and if we had to, if we had to put someone at left back, say we'd got Benning suspended and Hunt came on. And he was in, got injured halfway through the first half or something. I think we'd probably be able to manage with Hamilton at the back. Mm. I hope. I'd hope if, if anything long term, I'd hope. Uh, well, not so long term. Even if there's a couple of months out, I'd hope we just recall him. Yeah. I'd yeah. rather yeah. see yeah. Taft come back in. Than so that's the thing now, there. because of the new rules, there's no more emergency loans. loans or anything. So if you do get an injury, well, we can still recall Taft. Back we can from still recall Taft, Taft, but like. If, if we didn't feel that Taft would do the job, then we wouldn't be able to get anybody else in until January. Well, no. But and would you? Would it be worth running the risk or not? I think that goes a long way to show why Stevens has signed so many players as well. Definitely. But, you know, we've, we've dwelled on that in the past. That's obviously we, we talked about Taft there. That was the outgoing. The incoming was Callum Butcher um, on a permanent deal. I think I'm right in saying from yes. from, from Millwall. Many, you know, out there do rate him highly, and you know. He came off the bench and scored within two minutes, didn't he? So oh, fantastic. Yeah. Not a bad way to start, but that said, how many times have we seen a player come in, make an impact in his debut and then go, well, I'll just sit back and, and relax now? But that's it, I mean, we've got to give him a chance, obviously, then he came in and it's well right played off the game, didn't he? So we've got to give the guy a chance, but I mean, a lot, of, I think a couple of Millwall fans were kind of surprised that he dropped down to League Two, so that speaks volumes for him on that. Yeah. And I think it'll be different with him because we've had players come in before and they've been playing on loan at clubs, yeah, yeah. whereas Butch has been playing first team football for a League One championship team yeah. and played in playoff finals, high tense situations, semi finals. And I think that goes a long way that he has actually come into the club and wanting to get on with it. You see some players come into it, just get, they're just there to get the game time, whereas Butch is wanting to come. So obviously, he cancelled his contract with. Millwall by neutral consent just so he can come to Mansfield. It's an interesting point that you made is that mate, they obviously were talking about obviously signing players on loan and not being able to do that and then change the transfer window. There's actually a bit of a loophole there when you think about it because one thing you can do under the new rulings is sign a free agent. So what you've noticed a lot on deadline day was a lot of players who were good players and you know could probably sit you know sit it out or, or do a job were actually contract you know cancelling the contracts with clubs becoming a, effectively a free agent which then frees them up to go and train elsewhere and sign during this period because you can sign free agents all the way up to I think about two weeks before the January transfer window opens again there's only that sort of two week period where you can't actually sign anyone at all so free agents you can sign so maybe Steve Evans has got his eye 
on a few there, who knows. But one thing Callum Butcher did do, obviously, one thing he's lacking slightly in what Stephen has said as well, is obviously that fitness element. He played in the reserve team game uh, on Tuesday, yesterday at Rotherham. A 1 0 defeat, but when you look at the squad which, which played as well, obviously it was a loss to a penalty, how ironic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we, can, we, we can't score one, but we can't save one either. Um, it's interesting when you think about it because the, the team that played, the starting 11 that played, was a side which could easily start in League Two. And once again, let's start with the fact that it's imperative really that we are using these reserve leagues because so many times we've seen the under 21s and the kids just be put out by previous managers and players who need game time just not be used because of travelling or whatever but I think this year you've got no matter when the reserve team game is with the exception of the long trips I think you are likely to see a very strong Mansfield Town reserve side again using inverted commas. It is interesting and it really does show the, the depth that we've got in our squad. We've got you look at the team that was playing in the reserves, that team could quite easily have played well, outplayed most of our team last season. Well let's run through it. I mean I've got it in front of me here. It's obviously a Lesnik in goal. Um back four of White, Diamond, uh, Digby and uh, Hunt. Obviously Digby playing centre back, he has played there before, I think he played there and at right back for, for Ipswich Perfect, as well. Yeah. So yeah. Um, midfield um, of, uh, of Butcher, Jack Thomas, Alfie Potter, Alex McDonald, and front two of Jimmy Spencer and Amari Sterling James, who, you know, they both need game time, they both need to, to get in there. But again, it's a very, very strong side, isn't it? And, you know, it, it could do a job. It's vital to get these players' minutes. Well, I think it is, because I think we're, we're talking about their quality there. Uh, that is a very, very strong lineup, and I think, I'd say, at any point, uh, they, those players should be and, and will be called up to, into the first team so they need to be match you know not just fit but they need to be match ready as well and I think the more game time they can get um, you know in the reserves and the better it's going to be so I hope they do continue to, to play them. I think a key thing is that what Evans said when he came in when he was signing players back in January obviously his first transfer window with us you don't get fit to play you get fit by playing and I think that's one thing that will be crucial this season in the reserve games. The players that aren't quite fit enough to start um, a, a, a normal game gets that game time in that game, proves what they can do, proves they are fit and put in a good performance to show that they are ready for that for, for the big games. One name which sprang out to me on Twitter, Mark, yeah. reading through the, the reports and whatever, was Alex McDonald. Yeah. Again, it's his... Yeah. Should he be in the you know the lineup. I mean I think we I like Will Atkinson I rate him as a player but I think over the last two games or so he's, he's not been to the boil and I think if you take your foot off the gas you're going to get overtaken aren't you? Yeah I mean you look at him now it's, it's a different player to what he was last season you know, he's a lot more fitter he's rowing to go so I don't, I don't see why he's not playing to be fair I mean I know Atkinson's been there for the start of the season but I think he needs that really, to bring him into the team and get him playing because I think we've missed a bit of McDonald really. And I think one thing which we have had as well and I mean I know you know, we're talking about different sides, but he, he can play on, on both sides and does predominantly seem to play on the left-hand side, which would bring Anderson over to yeah. the right and, and what have you. But um, he's a bit more of a defensive-minded winger. He gets forward and likes to attack and likes to create, but he's also muscly. He gets in, he's strong in the challenge. And which side have we, we've been saying it every single game for the past three or four games are we vulnerable on now? Yeah, uh, take yeah. yeah and mm. you know, Wood McDonald would McDonald's introduction therefore move Anderson to the right, him onto the left and give us a little bit more assured, you know, assuredness on that side? I think it would, and I think Definitely, yeah, yeah. Probably, probably what we need, I think. Um, I, 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 like, like, like Mark just said, I think, he's, I think he's earned his place in the, in the starting lineup, and, and that's what, with all these players coming in, like I say, with the depth of quality we've got, they've always said it, at the end of the day, any shirts are for grabs, and uh, whoever shows that they, they, they want it and they earn it, then, then they should get it. So. I hope that that is the case, and he does does come in. I don't think it's anything that, I, well, he's said Axon's just been a little bit off the boil, but he's not played bad. But I yeah, think it's just the fact the fact that McDonald's is probably just looking better at the moment. Yeah. It's simple think, as that. Yeah. And if you look at the Lincoln game, he really did boss that midfield with Alfie Potter as well. Them two worked yeah. really well he's together. Not to get oh Potter. yeah, Potter Both up, of them, yeah. Potter up right, uh, uh, McDonald up the left. Very fast. Both got fantastic footwork. Both. Well, Potter's a lot smaller than what McDonald is muscular-wise, but he still gets stuck in. Yeah. Would you, do you think that they deserve a place? And Alfie Potter as well. If you yeah. go back to that Lincoln game, he's you know, this sort of reflects a little bit on the England Germany game last night actually as well. His 
fluidity and his movement box to box mm. getting us on the counter opened them up so many times yeah. and I think in a game like Grimsby where it's going to be a little bit, little bit more feisty yeah. going to be a bit more fast paced I think you need that counter attacking ability because that's where you're going to get goals definitely yeah. and Grimsby are always a big physical team so I think most of their threats are going to be coming from set pieces uh, as per most uh, local derbies because it's you don't really get much fluidity in a local derby it's all rough ready tackles yeah. Yeah, just yeah. crack on with it but I think if you want to get that extra edge, I think that's where you need to be playing football, getting that, getting the passes in. Yeah. And I think what we were playing against Lincoln really did work. It's just we don't seem to defend too well. That's the but issue, isn't it? And that, for me, that begs the question of whether it's down to the, you know, the way we're setting up as a, as a unit or individuals, but not gonna, not going to shy away from it. Mal we Benning, we don't seem to react again. well yeah. to lumping it long. No. It's we, very, you can tell that Lincoln are a conference team and you can tell that Forest Green are a conference team both them games they were just lumping it long yeah, hoping yeah. for a flick on yeah. uh, we're not, I don't think we're set up like that cause we saw a lot of it at uh, Crewe as well I mean so, I, I think a lot of the things we blog about and we talk about do come across as negative sometimes I want to avoid that because what I think we are is you know when we get the ball and we stop playing it and we have two three touches and we have that fluid two three Touch movement. Yeah. My mouth starts to wash, and I'm thinking, bloody hell, we can, we've got, a, we've got a chance here. It's having that rather than in those short. Have you heard of the training mechanism where you know you run 30, walk, walk two, and then you build it up. You run for 30 seconds, walk for two minutes, yeah. and then you change it to a, you know, and, and you gradually change it. You know what I mean, Nathan? Interval, yeah. The, the interval, interval training. training. I knew that's the word. Yeah. <laughs> interval training. It, we're sort of doing that with possession a little bit. We're just we're having yeah. that spell of bang, 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 bang. Yeah. And then, but then we have that. That it's what, yeah. yeah. Well, that's the frustrating thing, isn't it? We know we've got the players to do it. That's yeah. the thing, and they can only get better in time. Well, that's why I, I think we'll get more consistent. I think that we've got all that to come, and I'm still excited. I mean, like I say, it's this point start, but I'm still excited because we are only going to get better from here. Yeah. And Someone's going to take a battering, aren't they? Oh, they are. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Hopefully, it's Grimsby on Saturday. Yeah. But <laughs> someone, yeah. someone, I'd rather it be Notts County or Lincoln yeah. away. But yeah. Yeah. and I think this this side as well is very capable of going on the long run. Yeah, yeah. and that's definitely. what we're going to need. You know, you look at. Uh, the table this time last year, the, the teams that were down there, X2 were down there, mm. uh, Plymouth were down there as well, weren't they? And, and mm. you know, look where they end up at the end of the season. So we're only, what is it, five league games into it now? Yeah. yeah. Obviously, there's a long way to go. And I, I fully believe in this squad that we've got enough there, more than enough there, to go on a good run and, and, and really get some consistency in with us and move forward. Certainly so. Well, let's move from the present to the past and do one of our features. Mark, you mentioned it last week. We did obviously the Maxwell Matters Mastermind Challenge last week. If you missed that, yeah. get on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel and go and check out Cam Felton's effort at that. We will bring that back next week. We'll do it on a bit of a rotation basis, which means this week is the return of... 11. Nathan. Cam. Yeah. Oh, what I said. <laughs> <laughs> the return of the ultimate oh. eleven. And this is the the part of the show where we pick uh, a favourite player from a um, certain position, past or um, well, past really, past or past. I was going to say past yeah, or present, present. <laughs> not present. Uh, it can't be a current player, of course. It can be a player who was on loan. It can be a player who was on trial. It can be a player who was, um, you know, a permanent addition. Whatever. It's got to be a player from the past and from a certain position. The only rule is can't pick somebody that uh, another member of the panel has already picked so far in the Ultimate Ever 11. In goal, Alan Marriott, which was, I believe, your choice, yeah. Mark. Uh, at right back was Alex John Baptiste, which I believe was yeah. your choice, yeah, Mark. Yeah. Mark. <laughs> and <Yeah>. at centre, <laughs> centre back is Kevin Bird, which I believe was your choice, Mark. Yeah, we're saving it. So, no pressure, but uh, he's, you've got three in there so far. Um, so we're going to give you the, the, the first choice. We are again looking for the second centre back. So we're looking for Kevin Bird's centre back part, partner. Give me a name, uh, someone from the past, trialist, loney, or otherwise. Who are you going to put for your central defensive partner to Kevin Bird? I mean, you must have been thinking about this because last week you begged me to, to do the Ultimate 11 on the podcast. We're yeah. not doing the Ultimate 11, we're going to have thought about this. Yeah, you get ideas, don't you? And then we think not. Um, <laughs> I've got mine in my head as long as nobody takes it. Well, this is the thing, isn't it? <laughs> we're going to get criticised because obviously it's not, like, you know, recent player, but I'm going to say Tom Azoli. Okay, no, no, that's fair play. No, no, that's fair play. Uh, uh, Cam, you said you had somebody in your mind, so um, I'm going to make you wait. Nathan! Damn it! <laughs> 
Because they strictly have to play centre-back, has it? Ah, we see as I'm not going to throw a striker back there, but it's a uh, defender that could. We, give us a name and we will decide between us because we did this for Baptiste because we, you know, we said he played whilst he technically wasn't yeah. a right back for us he can play right yeah, back see, and yeah, see I'd, yeah. I, what I'd do in this, if, if this player was to be picked I'd swap it with Baptiste so ah, right, okay, oh, no, no, we, we're so. very open for yeah, that I'm going to say Bobby Assel ok yeah, Bobby Assel I think we, he was the choice for the right did you pick him for the right back? I wasn't here who picked him for the right? Someone did pick him for the right back, does it? Yeah. No, no. Well, we didn't pick him, and Kirsty when she came yeah. on, she said we should have picked. Ah, Bobby yeah, Arsenal. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, so yeah, we'll allow it. Like Kirsty's vote. Come yeah, on, Kirsty. We'll, we'll allow it. Uh, <laughs> Cam. In fact, I don't know whether because if you take mine, I'm going to be about really annoyed. No, 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 no. I'll leave it. Say it now. Yeah. John Dempster. Ah, okay. No, uh, I, no. Fair enough. You weren't going to go flat. He was my choice last time, actually. Ah, fair enough. Went for centre back. My choice is the Welsh wonder that is Reese Day. Fair enough. Yeah. So, uh, to, we've kind of ish gone for recent players. I mean, my, me and Reese Day have a couple of spells, so, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm a bit further back. He's still playing, he's back playing now, isn't he? I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm it's not sure. It's about 90 now, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to say it's <laughs> No offence, <laughs> Reese, if you watch it live. Crack it on a bit, I mean. <laughs> yeah. I thought he'd carry his, his brother Snooker queue now, but nowadays, <laughs> but there you go. Uh, right then, so, you were desperate uh, to, to get your name out there, so, should we let first? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've been a bit right, horrible yeah. to you today. I mean, there's the whole car park incident before. Yeah. 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 We'll, we'll, if I remember, we'll put the footage in, Nate. Yeah. 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 If you don't see any footage in this bit, yeah. then I forgot. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, go on then, Cam. You've got, you know, the rules. You've got a minute to, to make your pledge for, and you should write these down as well. Cam, uh, you went for. Dempster, John yeah. Dempster, did. So I'm forgetting already, you only told me like two minutes ago. It's been a long day. <laughs> Less uh, than one minute to um, make your pledge for why John Dempster should be in the Ultimate Eleven in three, two, one, go. John Dempster, the man mountain. The, the performances that he put in in the conference days, the big games, the Liverpool game, absolutely solid. The Lincoln on a Tuesday night in the replay, absolutely solid. Getting the goal, looping header. Just, he always rose to big occasions, but also performing the big games that we needed. Putting in a good performance against Wrexham, the game we got promoted. The game against Hereford, another one, putting in another solid performance. I think just, not just overly getting individual performances as well, he, he supported the team as well. A few goals from head, he's always had that support. And I think to be honest, just as a, a generic player, he's good, but only, like, you look at some of the players that we've had recently, you look how good he actually is compared to some of them that we've had. And to be still at the club, wanted to make the, the Stag Youth team better. I think it shows how much that guy actually lived for the Stags. As, as good enough to stop you there. Yeah, as he should. Dead. Good enough Damn. to stop you there. There you go, enough to stop you there. Right. Uh, so if you thought Cam made a plea for John Dempster to be in the Ultimate Eleven, head to Twitter at MTFC Matters and cast your vote. Nathan, you went for Bobby Hassel. Now you've got to put across a reasoned argument here. Before we do like that though, I have to say, somebody's been practicing the mirror that speech. Have you? It, it, that was clearly, rehearsed, wasn't it? was rehearsed, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. Was always like scripted. Yeah, for, good stuff like, yeah. What was <laughs> yours <laughs> for uh, goalkeeper? Someone... Impassioned, impassioned, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Always like Dempster, to be honest. Always fair play. play. Uh, you've got to put across a, a good argument here, Nathan. Obviously, um, the fact that you've you've gone for a, predominantly a right back at centre back, and you said you wanted to move him across, maybe swapping with Baptiste, which we're we're, we're flexible. That's yeah, the way yeah. football management works. Um, but you've still got, I I think, a tough job to do here to put across a, a good argument. Yeah. So are you ready? I'm, I'm. It's not rehearsed, but I'm ready. Okay. In <laughs> three, two, one, go. Bobby Hassel, also known as Robert Hassel. A solid Mansfield Town defender, versatile. Could go centre back if he wanted, but he's, he's known to be on the right. He's solid. Any spy right running down the wing, he would knock him into the stand without any hesitation. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. He would be confident in him with the ball. He's one of the very few Mansfield Town players, you know, with the young players, who was involved in, in success in the league. It's not happened to us very often, but he was part of it. And he's one of the very few that have also gone on to do better things as well. He's been successful at Barnsley, you know, going to higher leagues and maintained his place for the remainder of his career. And he's a top bloke as well. Is that it? That is. Uh, all right, for, for Bobby, he's a vote for a winner. 
Very, I'm going to give that a little round of applause because that was very impassioned. Well done, yeah. well done. You did start that with some passion and glory. <laughs> I did. I feel the pressure now. I mean, if, Mark, if you pull one out of the bag here, that's yeah. I might as well just go and jump in that, that little lake behind us, to be honest. <laughs> <We're> not far. <laughs> um, <laughs> your choice, uh, just to uh, remind us, uh, Mark, was you went for Taft, didn't you, Ryan? Not Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> Taft was Ollie. Taft was Ollie. <laughs> yeah, okay. Nice. So, are you ready now? No pressure. Cam's been impassioned. Nathan's been impassioned. <laughs> yeah. No pressure. No. Your time starts in three, two, one. Ryan Taft was Ollie. Man Martin, tough tight clip, no nonsense defender. You know, you've got Boy to Man, fantastic player, seemed developed to the player he is now, to go on and play in League One. What a fantastic player he was, I mean. Rock solid, you know, fantastic player, he really was. You know, see who, how far he's got now in his career, he was just a brilliant player to have. Played alongside some really good partnerships. Most notably recently with Christian Pierce, a uh, solid, solid partnership out there. Not a lot of got past him, and he was pitch up to us a couple of goals as well. But such a top guy as well. And so tough as only. I'm going to award that with a round of applause. That's, that's, that's very, very good. Well done. Cheers, well done. I thought that was good. I mean, it started off, it started off strong, and yeah. I thought at one point you were looking straight down the lens. And thinking, I thought you were going to get up and stare it, stare down the camera, and just go, "Vote for Taft." <laughs> but now I feel fresh. No. <laughs> Reese Day. No pressure, mate. Good luck. I feel it, I know. Okay. <laughs> I like how you added the. Like, I had it in, I had it in the, the music. I mean, you can do it if you want. I mean, it might be funny. I mean, yeah, well, whatever. Do what you want. It's not going to put me. If you want to try and put me off, you can. Whatever you want. Bear in mind, I'm taking you home and I will probably throw you in the water. Okay, here we go. Reese Day. Three, two, one. Well, Reese Day. A Welsh powerhouse. A Welsh legend as well, a captain and a leader, strong and solid like the sturdy Welsh man he is at the back, arrived in his prime, in his youth, from Manchester City, the glorious heights of Manchester, came in as a youngster, a young player, did well to shore things up in a time of uncertainty after that relegation season that the year before, Keith Curl's revolution, he was the rock at the heart of that defence, he drove it forward and then broke our hearts by the party. But he went on to have a solid enough career. And when he came back, the low from the low spell he had, David Holdsworth through his revolving door brought him back, gave him the captain's armband and he took it. Yes, he had a few injuries, but whenever he played, he was solid, he was sturdy, he was the Welsh dragon. He was the heart, the beating heart of Mansfield Town's defence. That is why you should vote for Reese Day. Hang on a minute, I do believe as well. Though. That wasn't bad. I was going to add one thing. The glorious heights of Manchester City. <laughs> Back in the time that Rhys Day left them and joined us, were Manchester City a, a considered a big team? Mark, just do me a favour, will you? Will you just hold the microphone? Well, no, 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 no. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not knocking it, because... He is, he's trying to argue for it's, a it's a fantastic, yeah. that's what he's it's doing. He's a fantastic yeah. player, but you look at the players yeah. that City had I'm before... Like, <laughs> All right, well, clearly you're not going to vote for... for you, like, you're, you're, you disagree with my Reese Day choice, so I'm going to ask no, everybody... No, Reese Day's a good shut player. Shut up, I've got... I just disagree with the big price of Manchester City. I'm making a point. I was going to ask everybody who... They would vote for out of everyone else's pleas. I mean, I'd vote for each day. Why are you, you just been slagging no, 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 me no, no, off? No, 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 no. You've been no, no, sitting no, no, there no, slagging no. off my pitch. <laughs> I, I respect Reese Day, and I would choose him to be honest out of all of them. But I disagree with the with the, with the heights of Manchester City. Just, I didn't think they were big. They were a big team. Does anyone else know what his point is making? Oh, Manchester City have only been a big team recently since they've had a bit of dosh coming in. Were they in the higher league? Were yes. they still a Premiership club? Were they getting hammered a lot? The time? Irrelevant. Yes. Were they? Were they? Were they high? Did yeah. they have Darius Vassell playing for them at the time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think they probably did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> probably Emil Eski or something bad. Well, who, who knows? But he's a free agent. <laughs> he's probably about forty on now. But Steve, get him in. So you say you vote for Reece Day, despite slagging off my, my pitch, or, or criticising, or critiquing, or whatever you want to call it, pedantic. Uh, Nathan, who would you pick? Um, Obviously, who's your player? I've even I forgot. Uh, John Dempster. Sorry, John. Sorry, yeah, John. I'm just a big fan of John, but uh, I'm going to go for a good old Reese. Mark, no. I want to say John. <laughs> <laughs> See, Cam and Mark with the bromance oh, back, I knew they are. Mark, 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 
This is how we do Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Move it swiftly. <laughs> What's the next portion of the show? Welcome back to Mansfield Matters Karaoke, where today the loser <laughs> of the karaoke challenge will be taking a swim across the lake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dearie me. Oh. Uh, so uh, that leaves me to make my choice. I, um, I'm going to stick with my fellow Ginge. I'm going to go bollock Bobby Assel. Good lad. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> uh, if you want to make your casting vote, go to Twitter at MTFC Matters. Uh, vote for the player who you wish to see in the Mansfield Matters Ultimate Eleven. Or if you disagree with any of us and want to get impassioned as candid about Reece Day playing for Man City, you weren't a great club, um, you can add the A and other option just tweet us who you think should make it into the Ultimate Eleven. We'll play again in two weeks' time. We'll reveal the answer in next week's podcast because next week on the podcast, because we're, we, we, you know, we change things up and do things it will be the Mansfield Matters Mastermind Challenge there you go that's how it works uh, thanks very much for playing along head across to Twitter uh, at MTFC Matters for that let's move swiftly on uh, last night at the One Course Stadium very very briefly England under 19s against Germany under 19s anyone go? yes no. Not, no. I had a ticket but decided not to go you decided not to you missed a Floodlight failure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. Personally, yeah. I thought that was the most entertaining <laughs> thing in the entire game. <laughs> um, I just think uh, I don't, don't want to talk about the game as entire because it's not England matters; it's Mansfield matters. I just think it's fantastic for the club to be able to, you know, to be chosen by the FA and, yeah. uh, and the rules. I think obviously there'll be a little bit of maybe a little, not necessarily backlash, but there'll be a few question marks asked over this floodlight thing. Which is We've never had a floodlight yeah, failure. Every game I've ever been to at Stags, I've never seen a floodlight failure. Yeah. I Probably when Haslam was in charge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. So it was a pay the bill. bill. That was about it. But yeah. 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 Still, yeah. Pay, still pay the electricity to bills for those teachers under the bishops where it's done, but there you guys are different yeah. thing altogether, isn't it? Um, it actually reminded me of uh, something Mansfield Matters past. I mean, I don't know if you, any of you will remember this. I Back in the day when I used to have no girlfriend, which is quite sort of coming back to haunt me now isn't it a little bit more it's like my day to day life and no other you know full time job to keep me occupied I used to do obviously a lot of commentary go to as pretty much every Stags game I could get to um, Paul Cox used to have a thing about obviously uh, playing sort of mid season midweek friendlies yeah. we played one against Rainworth Miners Welfare once which I presume the Stags are actually going to do in a couple of months time to make up for the pre-season uh, Thing. I remember this um, one. Yeah, Mansfield played Rainworth. It was a quite strong stag side as well, which which went down there as well. I did commentary on the game, um, and about midway through the first half, it went from light to absolute darkness. <laughs> Every single floodlight went out. The floodlights were off for a good half an hour to forty-five minutes. Any prizes for guessing who was the saviour? I think I remember this. It was the referee. It was a sparky. Nathan, what would you say? Well, I'm going to go with Cam says. So I've got no idea, but he sounds quite like he knows. Mark? Yeah, I've got to say it, Raphael. It was, <laughs> it, it was referee. really bizarre. I can remember reading it on Twitter because you'd posted it, and I was like, it's quite enough there because it was, you see one floodlight go off or yeah. two. And at Rainworth, you've got six floodlights? I think, yeah. Is I think, it yeah. eight? I think it's six. I think it's one and a half way. Is it one, one and a half way? But yeah, way, you'll, but you'll, you'll, it's quite regular you'll get a, a floodlight go off at a non league game. Just one floodlight. You don't expect them all to go off, <laughs> especially to be the referee, to be the saviour. <laughs> and that was quite funny. It turns out his day job was a sparky and he'd come straight from work and he had his tours in his van. So he put, he's put, he's put, that's he's that's not league for you, isn't that's it? it. That was, you can't get, get more change, long. Absolutely no yeah. more long league than that. Funny times. It, oh, it does bring back good, good memories. But uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, but obviously, it, it's uh, come back to the point. It was it's really good to, to see the one course stadium chosen, and that's testament to, to John and Carolyn Radford yet again. Yeah, it is, and it puts the club on the map as well, don't it? You know, and it, it's again, it's a good accomplishment for the club. Yeah, and it's. I, I guess obviously, you know. They would have got a decent tennis. What was? It? Can you remember what it was, Cam? It was, it was two. No. no it was yeah, go over three. Was it four? Was it no, three? it was three a bit. I think you were about three and a half. And yeah. they did the fantastic thing as well, which I have to applaud as well, which was groups over. I think it was. Was it over twelve groups of parties over twelve? Yeah. Fifty p a ticket. Like so, like football clubs yeah. could take the the kids along for for very little cost, and I think that's fantastic. And do you know what? I think that is testament to. Johnny Curry. I mean, I like a testimonial game. I'm, I'm a fan of it. You know, whether it's England under 17s or, you know, a reserve team game or whatever, to have, to get kids watching football, to get into that stadium atmosphere, to watch a good stand as well. Yeah. I think that is that is fantastic. So I would love to see them, them do that again. I think you know, well done to, to all involved with the club. But uh, if somebody's got a spare 50p, yeah, well, that was my, <laughs> he nicked my post from last night. But now, if I that is obviously thinking ahead in the future, if I had a kid, I would want them. I wouldn't, but it wouldn't be bothering me if they supported like a really big Premier League team. 
But if they wanted to support Little or Mansfield Town, I'd be thrilled because it's you yeah. getting them to the football. A lot of kids would be like, oh, I don't want to go see them. They're not good. Well, like I've I've seen it in the past. Kids that have I've I've brought with me that I've had friends I've been friends with. They've not been interested in stags before. We and I brought them to a game before where they're like it were kids for a quid a few seasons ago, or you buy one adult ticket, you get a kid ticket free, and we've gone along to them games and they've been coming regularly. So it's it's getting people involved, and not only is it to see Mansfield, but to get well what the European champions under 19s. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's great for the club, not and for the people of Mansfield. Yeah, more of the same, please, Mansfield Town. It'd Definitely. be great to, to see those coming well, involved. Under twenties next, so we've had under eighteens, under nineteens. Yeah, well, they, there you go. Who, moving who knows? on, yeah, moving yeah. moving on. Let's 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 get the next. Maybe a couple of years time, Southgate and the boys will be coming. The one course, no, they sure. won't. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Still there. You'll, you'll <laughs> compete for next. Maybe when. Right. Yeah, well, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Which is, is being built on the side of the ground, apparently. So there you go. Everything is yeah. come. That's maybe what it is. Maybe that's, that's foresight plan. planning. See, yeah, I like I'd it. Love, love it. it. It's great. Predict yeah. the future. Predict the future. The future. <laughs> the championship as well. uh, let's <laughs> talk about predicting the future. Then prediction lead time as we move on to look at uh, the two games coming up. Obviously, Grimsby on Saturday, which we touched upon, uh, and Wickham as well. Wickham will be the, the tougher test for me. Yeah. Good side. Always a tough side. Always tough to beat. Obviously, we remember the Checker Trade game last year. The league games against them last year. Uh, as well, Akinfenwa, of course, we, it will no doubt be signing autographs and, and doing selfies. Can and we whatever, just get Jamie Maguire to come play for yes, the yeah, yeah. game? He Thank bullied Akinfenwa yeah. every game. It was great to watch. Yeah, I, well, I, to, I totally agree. I think you know it, we need to bring yeah. bring back Maguire. Hashtag <laughs> bring back Maguire if you agree, just for one game, just for the Wickham game. Non non contract terms and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, dual registered with Boston or whatever, so you know. We can, yeah, let's let's get him back for, for that game. Maguire against Akin Fenwer, and do you know what? There was always only, only one, one winner. winner yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> and it wasn't Akin Fenwer. Yeah. The beast. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Right, uh, <laughs> let's have a look at prediction league then. Obviously, it's uh, um, I've not had a chance really to, to update the league table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the link in the description and put it on screen. Hopefully now, if it's not appeared on screen now, if you're watching the video version, I forgot. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we've got the latest league standings on there. Um, we didn't pick teams last time. I asked you to message me, in, but you all forgot. So it was a good. long way to call yeah, out. So yeah. We, yeah. Um, please do remember yeah. this week to send the, the team and the captain's yeah. choice. But let's go through the, uh, the the predictions of the scores and what have you. Let's start um, at, at uh, this end. I'm going to go. Um, we're going to do. We'll do both. Uh, so I'm going to go for. We'll start off with the Grimsby game. I will go for to start off with. Um, I am going to go for a three. All right, I'm going to put my neck, neck on the line. 3-0 Stags win. Uh, Danny Rose to score one. I'm going to say that um, Potter will score one. And I'm also going to say that... Um, yeah, I, I'm going to go for, for Pierce as well. I think he, he's due one as well. So, uh, Mark? Uh, I'm going to go 2-0 Stags. Uh, goal scorers, I think Angle, the way he's been playing. And I'm going to say... I want to say McDonald. Okie dokie, Nathan. I really fancy us this weekend. I'm going to go 3-1 Stags. Because obviously we're not going to keep, shit, keep killing shit, I'm afraid. Um, I'm going to go Leanne Goal. Um, my sponsored player, Paul Anderson. Uh, the man with the greatest beard in, in history, that's fine. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, oh, wait, I'm bringing it back, Paul. I mean, I'm sorry, I felt <laughs> guilty for shaving it off last time. I'm bringing it back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going to but, say Hammond's going to bag his first one. And then we'll go for for yourself, Cam. Uh, I reckon two no stags. Yeah. With Hemmings and hmm. I'm stuck on this one. I hope that McDonald's plays, so I'm going to play the same. McDonald gets a goal as well. Okay, mm. okay. And we'll go in reverse order as well. Give me your prediction for for the Wickham game on Wickham, uh, Tuesday night. Yeah, I, I think that'll be closer. I think two one stags and. Anderson and Rose. Okie dokie, which means Nathan, you're next. Yep, I'm also going to go 2 1. Um, I'm going to go for Daniel Rose. Daniel Rose, Daniel Rose. Rose. Yeah. Daniel Rose. <laughs> yeah. It's a Sunday name. And, uh, absolutely. And um, I'm going to say Amari Sterling James. Oh, okay. Interesting. 
Indeed. Uh, Mark. I'm going to go three one tonight. Uh, score is uh, Rose, and Diamond, and Sterling James. Okay. Uh, I'm going to probably be unpopular here. I think it's going to be a one all draw. Uh, and I think the goal scorer for Stags will be um, a cheeky little effort from Zandy Diamond. So there you go. I don't think we'll beat Wickham. And Akin Pem was always bound to score as well, isn't he? So, mm. so there you go. Uh, right, well, that is nearly it for, for this week's um, uh, podcast once again. Thank you, as ever, for joining us. But be, before we go, obviously, um, big month of fixtures coming up. It's been a big week. We've reflected on some of the negatives, the individual mistakes, which we've said have cost us probably seven points so far this season. We've mentioned some of the positives uh, as well. Paul Rayner said in his press conference on Monday when he spoke to the, the press about, you know, it's not about how you start, it's about how you finish, and it's not too concerned as yet. But is there one thing when we're reflecting on, you know, the, the Grimsby and, and the Wickham game in the podcast at the same time next week, is that what's the one thing you want to see happened for for, for Mansfield Town what do you want to see them change is it a points thing is it a thing on the pitch Cam what, what would you like to sort of be reflecting on and say do you know what I'm happy they've, they've started to go in the right direction by doing this I think that one the key area that I think personally I think we've got a fantastic squad and we could, really can challenge this season I just think closing out the game a bit more I think, think that's co- it obviously cost us points at Crow there was a 70 odd minute goal that's where we need to start closing the game at uh, Accrington away last minute winner Cr- uh, uh, Carlisle they were pushing on the back uh, pushing on in the last few minutes another one that's late slipping again against Lincoln in the cup another one where we've been slipping away in the last few minutes I think just, we need to tighten up at the back a bit more in the in the last 15 minutes. Nathan? I agree. I, I agree with that. I think uh, that is one for me to be able to see that game. But I also think, I just, I just want to win. I just think, I think we'll... That's it, isn't it? It's, it's get, that lift that winning yeah. brings. I mean, we're not playing... I mean, I said, said this to you on, on Saturday, Mom. We're yeah. not, sorry to cut you off, Nathan. I mean, we're okay. not... I'm not. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. Um, we're not playing bad football, are we, really, no. in spells? And, we, you know, we've, we've got points. But it's just, I think it's so frustrating, isn't it? I think that's the point you, you're making, isn't it, Nathan? It's just so yeah. frustrating to, to not have those points when we've thrown them away really haven't we yeah exactly it's been all our own doing it's not really what the other clubs have done it's what we've done and I think as soon as we correct that we, we've, we'll obviously start winning games so that and uh, if we can score a penalty I'll be very happy so I'll take that <laughs> Mark yeah more on the same road really. just a bit more dominant really and just just be more confident when on the ball really because we'll get ourselves into a great position and if it feels like we forget one game we can get a bit of a run going really and then that'll be it I think yeah winning breeds confidence yeah, doesn't it and I think definitely. that's that's the thing for me as well as Cam you said you made the, the, the point it's tightening that vice in midfield well I watched this it comes back to the, the Germany game last night the England-Germany game you see how they as a, as a young side moved with the ball and compact the midfield and stopped England getting through and then was able to go and nick another goal Later on, that's what I want Mansfield to do. We've got the players in there: your Digbys, your Byrams, your McDonalds, your Andersons, what have you. Yeah. Let's see a game out. Let's keep the ball. Let's frustrate the opposition. Make them make the silly mistakes, yeah. and we'll capitalise on them. Get that win. Breed that confidence. And if the referee points to the swap from spell from 12 yards, from 12 yards. Ladies and gentlemen, I woke up at five o'clock this morning, started work at six, and finished at five. So there you go. Um, if the referee points the spot and we get that opportunity from 12 yards, there are two things that I want to see. I don't want to see schoolyard squabbles over who's going to take the ball. Steve Evans is the manager. He makes the decision. If he says who's taking it, get on with it and get it taken and get it stuck in the back of the frigging net. Well, and the, yeah. if Steve Evans misses, remember, he said after press. That's it. So Mrs. Evans, if you're watching, on. get practice in love. Uh, and the, the other thing is the indecision at the back. If we're going to consist with playing with Conrad Logan, which it looks like we are, this is not a vendetta against him <laughs> at all. At all, it, it, it's really not. I just don't think the defence and the back four look comfortable with him. I want us to be comfortable with him. Let's do a trust exercise. Let's stand up in that dressing room. You know the thing where you fall the back trust and some, yeah, the trust yeah. fall? Let's have that confidence in the goalkeeper because if you've got that confidence in the back, if you've got that tightness and that understanding and that ability to work hard, and to know that whoever's behind you, whoever's on your shoulder, mm. is going to cover you if you make a mistake. Yeah. Then you can push forward and that breeds into the midfield and then that breeds into the strikers. Yeah. Indecision, 
put that out. I think it's as simple as that. Yeah, yeah. just a bit more commanding as well. Yeah. It's certainly so, certainly so. Last week on Friday, obviously, I went up to the, the Lake District and I went on a bit of a tour. I went through White Scar Caves in, in uh, the Yorkshire Dales, which were discovered by a man whose name I can't remember. Read the blog if you, if you want to remember it. But my point is this. When he first started, he went on a voyage of discovery. He got his hands and knees and crawled and carved out a way forward just because they wanted to find out what was on the other side. And Mansfield Town have done that. They've heard about this land which is over the other side of the lake, over the other side of the river, over the other side of the caves, through the caves, through the mountains, called League One. They've heard about it. Yeah. They've been there before, years and years ago, but not this current squad. A few of the players have been there, yeah. but not together. And this man got on his hands and knees and carved out a way through the caves and didn't get there in the end, he gave up. But other people came along and then they carried on that journey and what they found on the other side was actually a thing of beauty. And do you know what it just shows by one person's endeavours, one person's, what's the word I'm looking for? Instinctiveness? No. Desire to maybe find out what's on the other side? Impulse. Desire to go forward. Just shows, doesn't it, what you can find on the other side. So maybe, come this time next week, we'll have six points on the board. Maybe we'll have scored a penalty. Wow. Maybe we'll have two clean sheets. Who knows? Who cares? We do. Do you know why? Because Mansfield matters. Nate? Because Mansfield matters. Mark? Because Mansfield matters. Because Mansfield matters. From me, Craig Priest, from Mark Plum, from Nathan Edge, from Cam Felton, and from those geese who are tripping away and smoothly sailing across the little lake behind us. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. See you at the same time next week. Don't forget to interact on Twitter at MCFC Matters and on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash MCFC Matters. Why? Because this is the show for the fans, by the fans, and because Matters Matters. Goodbye.